dove season this year. Um, I'm headed out to the field. We are going to meet a couple of first responders out of Elizabethtown. Uh, we're taking them on a dove hunt. Uh, same place we went yesterday. Uh, we had actually had the game wardens come up to us yesterday, so we fully expect that to happen again today. Um, so just y'all remember, always make sure you're legal. Always double check everything before you get in the field. Check your plug, check your license, check everything. Make sure you are legal. We got kind of a break yesterday. Uh, one guy didn't have a zip survey. They let him get it. One guy thought he had his license and didn't have anything. And they let him go back and get, they let him buy all of it and nobody got a ticket. So we got really lucky, but that's just uh, like a punch home to remember to make sure you get everything that you need before you go in the field. Because very easily that could have turned into somebody losing a shotgun or somebody somebody getting a big, big, big fat ticket. Especially somebody that was shooting doves and had a pile in front of them. So y'all just make sure that you double check everything, you triple check everything before you get in the field to avoid any of this from happening. But we are actually headed to meet these two guys. Um, we're meeting them for breakfast and then we're heading over to the field and we're gonna start hunting. I'm gonna try and do a couple of interview things with them and just kind of see what got them interested in being firefighters, how much they like their job and what they like most, what they what they like the least, just just kind of make small talk and hopefully have a great time and see what their favorite things are about the outdoors and just have a hell of a time shooting some doves so y'all stick around this ought to be a fun one guys so we're out here we've been out here about an hour and a half i guess we shot a few four or five i think uh firefighters just went down and talked to them they've shot a few um devin just showed up he's down to my left and they're flying all right they're not flying as good as they were yesterday but they're still flying pretty decent today um we've got another field we're gonna go hit this afternoon and we'll uh we'll see how that footage goes um I don't have my GoPro, so we're using shot cam strictly, but it's it's working pretty decent. So y'all stay tuned and all four of them landed right there. They just letting them land? Yeah, because it's side to side, yeah. Action is out there. Goddamn, here they come, here they come. Hey, to your right, coming over the house. Right behind, just landed on the side of the ditch over on the right-hand side of the road. A telephone pole. Hey, 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 hey. Shooting. He was far enough, I was just going to try him once. Well, if you're going to try, I'm going to try. Try to turn him. If nothing else, going to try to get somebody else a shot at him? Yeah. I was about to. Uh, that's three, coming over the end. 
He's coming down the center. I'm like him drink a beer for the doves. I can't yeah, see. There's three, yep. Get ready, we're about to get rained on. We got one coming up. Right here, high bird. Over top. What is that bird out there shooting at? We got good volleys, but I mean, it's all. Who shot the decoy? Did somebody shoot the decoy? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> It didn't. It, it wasn't that far over. Did damn they decoy. That bird, Jason. They injured that bird. There's oh, the coming right up center. Oh, that one still made it. You hear that? That could have been you. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Look, there's two right there, there in the center. Right above us. High bird. Coming to you, right above you. High Sam, high bird, bird right here. Yeah! Oh yeah! Where? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, shorty with the shorty. There's a dove in those trees right there. Those weeds with all the little blocks. There's another dove right there, but one just landed back here in that back. Like right here in these trees going up that drain. Yeah. See the real nice green leafy one? Yeah. Those darker ones with the black all over them? Yeah. There's one landed in there. Here, two coming on the left, two coming on the left, right over your head. They're circling back, rider. Mother. Well, beat, beat, quack, 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 quack. Rider, right, right behind you, rider. Kill him. Coming right back to us. Hey, another one coming over your right, coming over your right. Another one right there, get ready, they might turn it. All right, well, my name's Sam Coffey. Um, I'm a firefighter engineer here with the city of Elizabethtown Fire Department. I'm on shift two, and I'm the engineer on engine 2034. My name is McKinley Gore. I'm a firefighter also on uh, Engine 2034. I've uh, been here for about 10 years now. I've been in the fire service for 14, close to 14 years now. So how long have you been in the fire service? I've been in the fire service for 17 years. I've uh, been with the city of Elizabethtown now for just over three. And both of you fire service family members, yep. previous family members? Yep. yep. My father and grandfather. My dad was actually the board for the Kentucky State Fire Commission, was the Area 5 coordinator, as well as a fireman in Henderson, Kentucky, and then my grandfather and grandmother were in the Army Generation Squad. So I get it from both sides, two generations deep. So what would you give young people advice on becoming a firefighter and wanting to get into this? Do it while you're young. Follow your dreams, work hard. What about the young guy? I have to, I have to agree with uh, Firefighter coffee here. I mean, we. I don't know. There's there's a lot of hoops to jump through at the beginning, but as soon as you after you start setting your goals and achieving them, life gets a little better. But the first few years is kind of hectic. 
and then shooting sports. What got y'all into shooting sports? Uh, I had a cousin that really, I mean, I never really got into any type of like, migratory bird hunting or anything like that until here recently. Uh, my deer hunting, I didn't even venture to that until my cousin that we lost uh, in the late, two th or early 2000s, uh, he got me to shoot and trap and ski. So, and then my uncle took over from there and got me, and introduced me to deer hunting and then much like that, it was, it was on, I had to keep going with it and just venturing out and exploring. As for me, I had a grandfather. Um, he was very passionate about the outdoors and, and hunting and stuff. Um, but I don't traditionally come from my media family. It's not big in the outdoors. My grandfather did, and he took the time to take me hunting. And he, he grew up in that kind of thing. Um, and it really kind of sparked interest in me. And then from there, um, you know, all firemen has got that secondary gig because we, we work 24 hour shifts, so we have some free time as well. And, I was the owner operator of Custom Wildlife Mountain Outfit in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so I'm a taxidermist by trade. So I get to not only deal with shooting sports, but I deal with most every animal from the North American continent. So. What do you like most about taxidermy? Um, I like to recreate. Um, and when I say recreate, I don't mean, I mean, we have the animals. I do do some recreations with antlers and that kind of thing. Um, especially we do a lot of artificial velvet being in Kentucky, but I, I just like to recreate scenes and habitat and do unique pieces. For me, it's art, and so the more unique of a piece I can produce um, with high quality and depth and realism, you know, the more accomplished I feel with it. So that, that's kind of what I like about that stuff. What's your favorite thing to hunt? Uh, I'm a hands down, being that I haven't really got into waterfowl real heavy. With turkey, turkey hunt's my thing. You get a more vocal hunt, you get the experience of maybe a turkey walking up on you you didn't know was there and shot him and you're like, oh, he's right here on us. Get up, you know, set up on us. That's, that's probably about the best thing it is. I'm, I like warm weather hunting. And any advice y'all would give to young hunters starting out or people that are starting out, maybe a little bit older, things, tips, tricks, anything? Find a good mentor. Um, I've got the opportunity to work with literally hundreds of kids, getting them into the outdoors over the last 15 years um, through camps and various hunts that I've put on. And those kids, everybody that we've had needed a mentor. So find a good mentor that'll take you, find somebody that'll take you on a regular and spend time with you. I'd have to say you have a lot of patience because uh, there's always gonna be somebody that kills a bigger deer. There's always gonna be somebody that kills a better animal in your eyes. But really, honestly, it's it's not about killing a big deer. It's about the experience that you get to spend. Like uh, Sam said here, uh, Take a kid. If you're new to hunting and you want to learn, if you want to learn patience, take a kid with you. They'll teach you patience. Any questions for me? Uh, why, why, so I understand what you do, but what got you into doing this? I get. I always wanted to like do something like this, like firefight, police officer, or be in the military or something. And I never, I never start. I mean, being with YouTube last couple of days kind of got me thinking about it, but I always felt like maybe less of a man or something because I never branched out and took that step. So it's just kind of my way of giving back to you all, giving you all the opportunity to do things or go places that you might not have been or experience stuff. So it's just kind of giving back to you all. Y'all put your life online for us. So no, I think I think you hit on something there that you was asking about young people and advice to get into it and. and for years, the fire service has been, other than maybe a volunteer department where you just go up and sign up, but to actually get into it as a career, it's almost been a secret. And there's what you learn and how to get into this, you need to find a department and go ask those questions. Because I tried to get on as a paid fireman for at least 10 years, um, and I didn't really know how to go about it. You know, and I had hundreds and hundreds of fire hours accumulated. I was a volunteer for, for many, many years. But um, until I got diving in and asking those questions, you know, how do I become a fireman? I didn't know. And, and so that, you know, ask questions. Go find, if you're interested in being a fireman, you know, find out what departments are paid departments and, you know, go ask those questions. How do I become a paid fireman? And, uh, another thing to add on to that is being, being in a first responder role, 
it's all about proving yourself. From start to finish, prove that you're worthy enough to have this job, that you want this job, that it's what you want to participate in, it's a career, it's a million dollar career. Stay with it. Uh, sometimes, some days are hard. They're, they're, they're very hard. Um, but as, as a family person, uh, it's kids of my own. When the 24 hours is over, you gotta leave that stuff here. You can't bring stuff home with you. That is nice. I mean, I, th I think this career is nice from the standpoint of, you know, I think everybody needs a small break away from the hectic family life. But yet, so you, when you come here, you're going just enough that you want to be home when you're home. Absolutely. And so you look forward to being home. And I think a lot of, a lot of times with, with regular jobs and people in the stress, because you go to it every single day, you know, you carry a lot of that home with you. Um, with this job, it's really easy because we're here for long periods of time. You know, we have it while we're here, but, but we look forward to going home because we are gone for 24 hours. Like, we have and two, we just, we drop it off. So we, we have two families. Yes. I mean, we got a family that's here that sees and does the same things that we do. And help. they help us build the knowledge up through their experiences here. So that way it makes us better when we're at home. We have, I mean, it gives us lessons in life, lessons to do things. And, and that's probably the greatest thing about being a paid farmer is that you do have another support system here. Uh, seeing as we're here for 24 hours, I mean, we, you know, we just told that story. I know you, you're going to throw that in there somewhere, but we cut up with each other. We joke with each other. We're all the time trying to get at each other, and it's really because we just, we just love each other. And, uh, they're really like a second family. Now, can you bring anything from here as far as second family into the shooting world? Does that tie together in a way? I, I believe so. I mean, as far as like camaraderie, friendship, like second family. Absolutely, concept. and the camaraderie side of it. I mean, you know, you, you learn a lot of patience. You learn not to get your feelings hurt. You learn if, if you go out there and you have a bad day shooting. And, it's okay, it's not the end of the world, you know. I can remember some days back early on when I'd go out there and I'd shoot four boxes of shells, kill three doves, and just be mad, and now it's all about just having the time to be out there. Yeah. So, so it does a lot of it, I think that's very good. Well, it was a pleasure to with you too. Yep. Look forward to doing it again. Thanks for the interview. Thank you yep. all. Anytime.